Hi, this is Maji Noni, and here's my review for Green Lantern number 58 and uh, Emerald Warriors number 3. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of blue in these covers, which uh, the, the blue lanterns are predominantly featured in both of these. Now, overall, I can't really say that I can give the, either of these glowing endorsements. They're pretty much in the middle of the storyline, and... In my opinion, I think some of these storylines are kind of dragging a little bit, and it's dragging me to the point of I'm getting really bored. Uh, here's an example for uh, the Green Lantern one first. Now, you know, if you remember Atrocious and Estro and uh, Hal and those guys are all looking for those uh, beasts, you know, the, the what that creature that is what makes the Lantern what it is. And somebody's going around, you know, basically capturing them. So, you have the teams pretty much split off. You have Sinestro and Atrocious on one side. You have Hal going off into space with um, Carol. And then you have the Orange Lantern on Earth. So there's a lot of jumping around. Now, the only thing I would say, that there's two parts to this book that actually I enjoyed. The first is you have Atrocious and Sinestro at a prison and they're investigating this beast attack, which is basically, you know, they're looking for the, the red one, the red creature. Now, what I, this is the part that I liked. You know, Atrocious senses the rage that's in these buses where the prisoners are, and he basically goes, hey, you know, what's going on in there? Are these people murderers, whatever? Cop confirms that, and Atrocious does the right thing, and he kills them all. Now this, I applaud. I give this a 5 out of 5 star for staying to character and taking care of business. I appreciate that. Now, and then you get a little better between Sinestro and Atrocious because, you know, they're, you know, obviously they're not going to like each other and it's a reluctant um, truce that they have to go through. Now, the second part of the book that I liked was right over here with uh, Carol and Hal. If you remember, you know, Hal and Carol used to date, and then, you know, Hal would go off, bad do his Green Lantern stuff, and Carol would be like, when are you coming home? And he'd be like, when the job's done. And now Carol is, you know, on the Star Sapphires, and she's basically going to be their queen, and Hal's like, well, no, you can't do that. Now he's acting like a whiny bitch, you know. He's jealous of this creature, and, you know, you, you can see it right here, where he's creating this dragon to push the creature back, and he, he's acting like you know, jealous jerk, and I think this is awesome, because, you know, Hal's, you know, Hal's kind of like a jerk, and, um, you know, she basically does the same thing to him, oh, he's like, well, when are you coming home, and she's like, well, when the job's done, and he's like, oh, I guess I, um, take a cold shower tonight, then, well, anyways, the rest of the book is centered around the blue, um, essence of that blue lantern thing, I keep forgetting what those things are called. But anyways, um, it finds a new host, and the thing that I kind of find really weak in a way is why is that? Why are they all on Earth? You know, the universe is huge; it's massive, but everybody seems to be on Earth. I mean, I understand that it's a mighty convenient plot plot device. Let's make them all on Earth, and everything's grand, and you don't have to jet set them all over the place. But on the other hand, it's it kind of ruins the aura of believability. And I, you know, I know you can always write write it in saying, well, Earth has the greatest potential for the host, but blah blah blah. But you know, I know it's just BS. It's called lazy writing. You know, I don't fault them. I'm just saying it's kind of lazy. Um, so, anyways, that's the rest of the book where they're dealing with the um, the blue indigo. I mean, sorry, not the indigo, but the blue lanterns. Uh, and then at the very end, uh, a guest star comes in Flash, and he basically says, you know, Hal, we have to talk about your buddies. And you know what buddies he's referring to right here, those two guys. Um, so overall, it's, you know, it's not like I would recommend it. it. It's just like an average book. It's nothing fantastic. I think it's, I think it's dragging. But um, it's just all right. Next up is the Emerald Warriors. Now, Guy is on the um, blue planet. 
because he's trying to get rid of the red rage out of him. And Atrocious sends one of his henchmen, which is actually one of my favorite ones, that one girl with the, you know, the busted up wings. I really like that girl, whole origin story and whatnot. But anyways, so she goes there and she's basically going, she's trying to deliver a message to the lanterns, and of course, because she's rage, it doesn't quite come off that way. It's not like she can really formulate a sentence. Now, a couple, key thing that is going on here is the fact that in the presence of blue, the blue, the green lanterns are actually supposed to get a power increase, power boost, and in this case they don't. They pretty much stay at 99%. So something's going on that they can't figure out yet. So, you know, you get the mandatory battle until you figure out what she's all about, and then she basically says, you know, hey, Hal, I mean, sorry, Guy, you can't take the red out of you. You're going to need it for the upcoming battle. And here's where we need to go for the upcoming battle type thing. So, you know, it's it, it's a nice plot, convenient plot point to get her into the thing and move the story along. But I'm like, when it's three issues, and it took you that long to get that far. Well, anyways, um, the next part of the key part of the story is, you know, you're dealing with, you know, the fake lanterns over here. You know, when they, when guys taking all the the uh, telepaths and he's basically putting him in this machine-like thing and he's controlling them using all their power and he unveils his one of his plants and basically forming his own core which actually I think was, is a really smart thing to do it shows a lot of intelligence it shows a lot of patience that's the key part it shows patience and anytime you have a villain who shows patience with intelligence that's usually a recipe for he's pretty darn dangerous so you better watch out you know, because let's put it this way, when when you have that villain who just is impatient, likes to jump at anything, takes unnecessary risks, that's the guy that always loses, without a doubt. And, um, and usually those guys are pretty easy to take down. Um, let's see. Other than that, um, that's pretty much it. Then they, you know, they go off to the Uncharted Dark Universe that's been, you know, nobody is supposed to go to. Um, overall, overall, it's not really that great of an issue. I mean, it's okay. Uh, I think what I'm hoping for is it's going to get better, so I'm, I'm actually going to stick with it just a little bit longer in the hopes that it gets better. But unless something really shows me, like, wow, with these Green Lantern titles, I'm probably going to start dropping them one at a time. Because they're just, they're really starting to bore me as a whole. Oh, and there's a little bit about Ion. Uh, I think it's in, uh, let's see, Ion's in this one, where they're, you know, they give you a little update on, on what he's up to, what he's doing, and things like that, which is, which was kind of interesting, but I'm like, ah, who cares about it, and, oh, this one, this issue here also has the uh, Superman preview thing, and actually, uh, this actually kind of looks interesting, the Earth, Earth 1. I mean, the art's really nice. I really, really do like this. So I'm probably going to end up getting this. I mean, I know this is kind of kind of sound kind of strange, but this actually was the highlight of this issue for me. Um, this didn't have it. So, you know, no highlight for me there. So anyways, that's my review for the two Green Lantern books that came out. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, rate the video up or down. Let me know what you guys think. And I'm kind of curious to know, are you guys feeling the Green Lantern burnout yet? Or do you think uh, Jeff Jones and all those guys are still right on target? Uh, let me know what you think. I'm kind of curious. So, um, until next time.